Welcome to Dog Sushi, where every Counter Strike gameplay turns into fascinating story. Bro, that's literally my name. Should we watch this first video? I'm down actually. It's a viewer. Hey, I like when some of the viewers start doing their own stuff, bro, and we get to enjoy that as well. The rise of Counter Strike's richest players. Imagine making millions of dollars by simply playing Counter Strike. That is literally impossible. Are you sure about that? I'm not a millionaire! Chat, and you're gonna say Kappa. I am one of the streamer. Uh, nine, I'm not even gonna. Bro, yeah, you're gonna say Kappa. Yeah, uh, bro, nine. I, I, I never do think. I don't have a single sponsor right now. Zero. Mm -mm -mm. The only sponsors that I've ever had, I had, what, three months? I once had market. I had the market sponsor. That's it. All I do is stream, YouTube, TikTok. Those are the three things where I make money from. That's it. And you can literally find out how much I make. It's. I'm not a millionaire. I'm not a millionaire. Not yet. <laughs> That's just one, Maybe one of who turned their love for Counter Strike into millions of dollars. The rare millions is so disrespectful. I'm not even kidding. For skin collections, making real business. I pay fifty percent tax, buddy. Else I may be a million. I don't know. Design maybe. That, or ending up in jail. But to find out how they did this, we need to dive into their full stories one by one. Beginning with Oni Pixel. Mark was your average seventeen-year-old kid playing Counter Strike and having fun. Back then, as I remix, Mark quickly decided to re- Wait, what? Oh, is this, is this gonna be one of these videos? Where they, where they have my whole f uh, life history, and I'm gonna even shocked about that. Did I did I ever talk about uh, um, uh, my other names? I remix, yeah. This was one of my OG names as well. Join Banana and I remix. Having fun. Back then, as I remix, Mark quickly- I Actually, I think I had this profile picture. Decided to rename himself to Oni Pixel. But he got bored of playing the game, so he made the decision to go into the skin market. His main goal with this was not to get rich, but to make a small addition towards his monthly income, not knowing he was going big. No. No, no, no. I started with skins in high school because I was intrigued by them. I watched Max Skelet every single day. I came home from high school, always watching the new upload immediately. I was addicted to skins, knowing about the stuff before I was collecting coins. Do you remember? Uh, do you know these like coin, coin books? And I always, when my mom came back from Little Aldi, I asked her, let me see, let me see the change that you got. Check the backside of the coins. Belgium coin. Forgot about this one. Don't have it yet. Boom, into the book. Got addicted to skins. It was never about the money. Never. Except the odds of this happening. The money comes with it. Happening was close to zero. We're talking 2016, where a dragon lore was around $300. To give you a sense of this, this is what the game looked like in 2016. At the time, everyone already thought that skin prices had reached their all-time high. Maybe this dream was already dead. But Mark didn't believe that, and wasn't afraid to try it out anyway. Even though little Mark had hardly any money, he did his best. Staying up all night, just going on Reddit, yeah. researching how prices were behaving, why they were- Look at these posts. One of the owners received a 125 key offer after the OG video. Hope that insight helps you. Why the hell did I use that emoji? Why? Oh, you can't see. Why the hell did I put this kitty cat emoji? Rising and learning all about patterns, cases, and trade ups. Oh, look at this. I had a Freiburg Karambit. Freiburg Minimal Wear Pattern X510, by the way. Sexy, sexy knife. Which led him to make his first purchase a gut knife, blue steel, for $85, only to sell it a few hours later for a profit of $60. Traded for gut knife, blue steel, factory. For a gut knife? Ugly. Oh. Even if that wasn't much, it was Come amazing on, for man. OniPixel. Because the thing is, at the time, there wasn't a seven day trade lock, so you could sell a skin for oh. a higher price immediately after buying them. A so called flip. So instead of relaxing. Good times. Zero friction. CSGO lounge and so on. You wanted to trade with someone and you uh, he had a $100 item. He ha you had a $200 item. What did you do? The guy just bought some keys of OP skins and he added onto his item. Suck. Immediately you do the trade afterwards. Wow. Taxing only pixel grinded for days and nights doing nothing else but trading skins for other skins. Traded for butterfly knife case hardened. Traded for traded for Doppler phase four. And a few months later, selling a deagle for $14,000. 14 keys, dumb <laughs> What is he waffling about? <laughs> That's keys, bro. This is I still for What do you mean, 14,000? <laughs> okay, I think he's joking, huh? Or he actually, I don't know. Or he's acoustic. 
later selling a deagle for $14,000 instead of another skin. He thought he made it out of the trenches, but even with this money, Mark <laughs> could lose it all if he didn't spend it wisely. Gaining more experience and making more money with which he would buy more expensive skins, selling oh! them for even more profit. As one of my favorite skins that I've ever owned. Look at this USPS. Chat. There's only one USPS in this world that has two Iber Power holders on it. There's a lot of them that have 1x. I think there's one that has 3x, but that's banned or something. But this is literally the only 2x. And it's a souvenir. It has the mountain sticker on the handle, non holo on the front. It's a. Uh, I forgot about the name. As well as showing them off on Steam screenshots. Which yeah. clearly. Ah! Souvenir Drangler! Bruder! And this was my stupidest trade ever. I, 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 this Dragon Law, back in the day, I bought one now, like, this one back in the day, Souvenir Field Tested Dragon Law, Souvenir, was back in the day, $5,000. I bought one a couple of months ago, now in 2023, for 50000 It literally 10 x And I sold this Souvenir Dragon Law for a goddamn Karambit case hardened, um, for the best Stat Trek Factory New Blue Gem. And that item I sat on for so goddamn long, you don't even know. There is one Stat Trek Factory New Blue Gem in existence for the Karambit. Um, or like like one, arguably, tier 1-1. One, one, and it's this one. Pattern like 6 9 8. I traded that souvenir drying law for this Karambit right here. The best Stat Trek Factory New Karambit. And I couldn't get rid of it. I couldn't sell it for... Pff, I think I had that, that thing for like a year or something. I'm not even kidding attracting even more buyers have a trade offer for you no way you're trusting this random person okay sent you the skins where's my money hello classic hello? the incident oni pixel was at zero again losing all his progress and hard-earned money he had made over the she got the timeline a little bit wrong i didn't get scammed um at that point i got scammed probably round about like here ish i lost everything to a guy who said yo I'm gonna buy your skins. I wanted some um, some IRL money, and he said, "Yo, I can do PayPal." And then I said, "Well, well, well. I've seen people getting scammed by that. I'm not stupid. I'm only gonna sell to you via PayPal if you do friends and family, because I thought that way you can't refund it." Oh my days! What did he do? One month later, I saw myself minus three thousand dollars on PayPal. I didn't even know you could have a negative balance. And I asked my mom, "What do I do?" And then we. Uh, paid PayPal 3k. That I I, I lost. I think it was 3,000 or something, which was everything at the time. For the past months, making him quit the game. But we wouldn't be talking about him today if he didn't make one of the most important decisions of his life. Coming back a year later, he wanted to make the money back. First day after going back into wrong, I came back like I think two months later or something. I was hella sad for for weeks, months. I think I came back one or two months later. Bro, you can never, I, I, I could never quit CS skins even after I downfall like that, bro. I just came back after a month. To skins, would call it a decent day. Oh, ho, 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 ho. First day of going back into skins. I think this was while I was in Ecuador. I'm not even kidding. I was doing an, a voluntary year in Ecuador. And in the last station where I was, I was working at a zoo. And I had so much free time. In the other projects, I worked in four different projects during my one year there. I worked in a permaculture farm. I worked with families because there was a big earthquake in Ecuador and we rebuilt, rebuilt some stuff. We bought some, uh, we, we, we built some Hochbeeten um, with them. I don't know what you call it in English. We did like some gardening for them and with them. Um, and the last project was in a, in a zoo. Not a normal zoo. It was a zoo which um, um, took uh, like rehabilitated animals or something. Like, not a fucked up zoo, a cool zoo. And I had so much free time there because the shifts were only, like, from 10 till 6 or something. In the evening, I was just like, I had nothing to do, nothing. So then I got heavily back into skins. Heavily, bro. And this, I bought, bought, bought. Look, this is all what I bought from the bat in, um, that was in Guaya Guayaquil, I think. Um, in the middle of Ecuador, bro. Bought, bought these really hard and with his already gathered oh! knowledge it didn't take him long until he reached a okay, new I didn't buy these I just reported all-time high with each flip being more profitable than the last however he stopped doing that 
In hindsight, this may seem like a dumb move, but you'll see why it's genius. Mm -hmm. He focused not on making quick flips, but instead buying rare collector skins that will never come back to the game, especially the Katowice stickers for around $2,000. Even if they were in the tens of thousands, Mark could afford it. This led to his inventory now reaching a value of $100,000, and with that, he felt ready to share his knowledge. Now streaming on Twitch helping other people out, and most importantly, showing his incredible skins. And just when he thought he couldn't get richer, the skin market in 2021 rose with a single dragon lore being worth over $15,000. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god! But what? Dignitas solo when oh. it was worth 2000 yeah. Especially his 4000 kind of something like that. at $80,000 instead of 2000 Making him even wealthy. Oh, Chad, I used to own two Titan holos. And I sold them to a Russian guy, a Russian collector, thinking that I got the deal of my lifetime. I bought them for like, I bought them for 5k each or something. And then I sold them to the Russian guy months later for 7k or something. And I thought I got the deal of a lifetime, brother. Jesus. Now they 70k each. Theory. But I still have most of my caddos, so still like I, I should never be, oh my god, could have done this, should have done this. I am more than happy. But this wasn't even OniPixel's main source of income. As time went by, OniPixel managed to almost double his viewership every single month. Despite the success, Mark remained humble, not accepting any contracts and staying true to himself. But even with an inventory Aww. worth over $1.5 million, a con- What? <laughs> what the hell is he talking about? How much is my inventory? <laughs> no way, it's a, it's not a- what the hell did I just do? Steam recap? Oh my days, I thought I just leaked- oh my god, why is it at the bottom, bro? I, 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 people check their inventory, that's so scary. We're gonna check that after this video. Um, huh? Okay, nah, I have more than that. <laughs> Yo, chill, I have more than that. What the hell? Chat, is uh, Shark Bay still working? To all the OGs, if you know, you know. <laughs> no? Nah. Slash inventory. <gasps> Please! Is it working? This is the best um, valuation system when it comes to uh, skins. I don't know if it still is. It used to be. API error. Well, GG. <clears throat> well, if it was working, it would be. It's actually taking sticker overpay and floats into account. Still only roughly, but it was always the best compared to CS money and so on. Hmm, shit. How much is my inventory? I have no idea. It's not a mill though. It's much less. Contract worth $10 million and a fat pay from Twitch? There are far more impressive millionaires in our community. But before we can go into that, subscribe, since this video took a lot of research. Who's next? Unlike OniPixel, Monarch hid in the shadows, meanwhile building his mill- Here we go. From Twitch to gambling side owner. Oh no. Is he gonna keep it a stack? Million dollar empire. Coming from RuneScape, he already knew how much in-game items could be worth, and he would use this to his advantage. Since he wanted to spice up Counter-Strike, Monarch saw the potential and got himself a loan of $11,000. But not to buy skins. He spent months working on a project that could either fail like his old ones, or change his life forever. However, things would turn out very differently, changing Counter-Strike forever. So how did this all begin? This feels like a video by Monarch. He used the name, and then to make a video about himself, you know what I mean? Because Monarch, it's like, is stuff even about him public? Made this video with Joe Banana. Really? <clears throat> yeah. With his $11,000 loan, Monarch decided to open- And then to advertise his gambling site. In CSGO Empire, a casino. Remembering 2015, everyone was sponsored by already existing ones, including Anomaly, who would soon make a decision changing everything later on. So Monarch had to do something differently to stick out. There's something I didn't tell you. Monarch tried that already two times in RuneScape and failed. So he was even more shocked how fast his site blew up, bringing in approximately $750,000 each month. Now being the one who sponsored everyone, until he fired everyone? But he wasn't done yet. This time in CS, bro, Chad. I mean, you, 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 can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can be fine about gambling, right? But what the f*** went on during these times? Bro, and it's like as a kid, you don't even realize what the f*** is going on. Because I myself, I, I am not... I don't like these gambling sites at all, the CSGO skins gambling site. Yes, opening CSGO cases is gambling as well, but it's, I explained it many, many times why um, I can live with myself doing it on stream rather than doing this on stream, like taking, you know, like sh shilling a code to my fans and so on. But back in the day, everything connected with CS was this. You know, do you remember? Face clan dropping videos, like 
äh, CSGO Wild. The Team Martin Star, Phantom Lord on CSGO Shuffle and so on. I remember um, watching things like this. Giorgio, I remember watching back in the day. Me! And it was like, as a kid, you thought uh, everything is real. This is actual money. It's, it's, I was hooked behind my monitor, looking at Phantom Lord uh, bet his money on CSGO Shuffle. Uh, now, I, I wonder how many people of, like, still, maybe some in the chat are young. It's, it's all fake. It's all fake money. It's all, and even if it's not, it's still, they can ask for refill. Like, yo, I just lost 10k on your side today. We're, we're partnered. Can you give me my money back? Boom. It's, it's. Or whether it's, I don't know, uh, I'm a streamer now and uh, you can see that most things are shady, but it's, it's, I remember being so hooked behind my monitor looking at Phantom Lord Gamble on CSGO Shuffle and other people as well. Bruder, I was hooked. Hooked. Even the Max Skillet videos I watched about like CSGO Magic and stuff. <clears throat> I was so hooked. Trilux with CSGO and Trilux, yeah, but Trilux did it ages ago. Like Trilux does, uh, is full against gambling nowadays, no? When it comes to those sites. Yeah. Shortly after, he and his team started exposing a rival site called CSGO Wild. They did this because the site used rigged funds, and with the profits, they founded the now famous CSGO FaZe Clan. The sports organization called no. FaZe was looking to expand its horizons, initially buying a competitor CSGO team. But the problem is, they didn't have the money. Yes. This clan was founded with Gamba money. In response to this, Valve decided to take responsibility and started sending out cease and desist letters to all existing websites at the time, threatening to sue them if they didn't go offline. All that reached a peak in 2018, and Valve banned all inventories that were connected to such a site. Now Monarch lives somewhere in the woods, streaming with a DJ in the background. This event would not just only crash Monarch's career, while OniPixel used his fame and Monarch his coding skills, McSkillet would combine both. And with his newfound love for Counter-Strike, he would make a decision that would change his life forever. On Valentine's Day, the 14th of February, 2014, the 15-year-old Trevor from San Diego, California would go on YouTube and create a channel under the name OG Skillet, later simplifying it to McSkillet. But he didn't go far, since he had no idea what to upload and gave up. Instead, focusing on the CSGO skin market, flipping items, buying his first knife and doing trade-ups hoping to get low floats. However, that would change on the 22nd of April in 2015, when he published his first video titled CSGO Top 10 Most Expensive Skins wow. and Rare Weapons 2015. Unlike most YouTubers at that time, McSkillet instantly went viral, putting him to the most viewed CS YouTubers, and that was just his first video. He was lucky, and with that, met like-minded people. We all want to make a successful casino! <laughs> Let's put your fame and our skills together, and make this happen. Now with some extra hands, he was able to create three pretty decent sites. The first one being Skin Trade, turning unprofitable within the first few months, with the second one having a similar fate. Oh, wow. However, all this work didn't completely go to waste. As for the third one... Alright, what's going on guys? Maxkillage here with another video. Bro, I remember I was so hooked to Maxkillage's videos, bro. I was so hooked. He, he is... Who got me into skins together with Ruffle Monster and Tea with Milk and Sugar? Those three people. Tea with Milk still streaming is streaming nowadays. Ruffle Monster started going into the shoe business. Max Skillet, we all know what happened, but those three people got me into it, bro. I was so intrigued. He got me into skins. He taught me most. But in the today beginning. I thought I would switch it up and just do a real life video because I've been seeing plenty of. New oh, that was fast. Players loved McSkillet and CSGO Magic. Players spent thousands and money kept flowing. Bro, Following the success- and I will never forget, I don't, I don't wanna talk about this topic too much, but I, I still feel weird about this. Literally, a week before the incident, he followed me. Like back in the day, I was, I was, I, I literally was only posting on Twitter I, I got maybe like 15 wow. likes per post or something. I was posting about some CSGO skin stuff. A week before, um, he followed and then um, he does the thing, bro. It's, I don't know. Mm -mm. ...full release, McSkillet continued to improve his site and YouTube videos, with that getting more views and even more people onto his site. Being at the number one spot will cross over financially from flipping... I remember being so excited when that follow came in because it was... Such a fanboy moment, bro, and then a week later, oh my days. <clears throat> Skins for a few hundred bucks to buying a McLaren within the first few months of the launch. He was filthy rich. But the billion dollar question is, how can he make this stay profitable, avoiding the fate of the other two earlier sites? Yes, getting up was easy since he already had a community, but staying up and being profitable is a much, much bigger challenge. 
But the question didn't even need to be answered, because only a few months after the release, the 2018 drama peak occurred, and CSGO Magic received a cease and desist letter from Valve. He had to take his website offline. Even with this happening, he still had his $500,000 Steam inventory. Nope. Valve banned all inventories that were connected to such a site. Oh, right. So not only his main source of income, but also his inventory was gone. Everything was at zero. Instead of making a comeback like OniPixel did, McSkillet retired. And we all know how that ended up in a catastrophe. But doesn't that make you realize, despite everyone somehow doing their own thing in the CS community, in the end everything was and is connected. From the sad end of McSkillet to the glorious rise of OniPixel that is lasting to this day, we've been through a lot, and there is hardly another game Bro, with such a lot. How does he just go from this, like the most aggressive, to the Caribbean music? Ah, uh, oh, happy. Bro, what the chill? Legacy. And I believe oh. CS many more years of bringing joy to other players. <laughs> and as we can see, in the end, honest work always wins. But considering how massive Counter-Strike is, there's a lot of people I left out. So if we somehow get 5k likes, I promise to make a part 2 with even crazier players. Oh ha! Have ambitions! What the- First video my man asked for 5k likes! Calm down! <laughs> What the? Sparkles is asking for 5k likes. Show. If you enjoyed, That's be sure to crazy. leave a like and comment who I should not forget. I respect the confidence. The next video. 5k likes is crazy, dog. I'm not even kidding. Hey, boom, once to WhatsApp. Interesting video. Interesting video.